few years ago, modular phones were supposed to be the future. Swap out your camera for photography. Phones getting slow? Swap out your processor for gaming. It seemed like the perfect idea until it just vanished. So what happened to the modular phone dream? Well, the idea of a modular smartphone actually brings us back to 2008 with a company called Modu. And their idea was just weird. The Modu phone's attempt at modularity was their little jackets. There were camera jackets, music jackets, night jackets. Yeah, apparently in 2008 you also had to dress your phone up to go out. And it does sound crazy now, but in 2008 Modu were trying to solve a real issue. How do you make one phone no bigger than a credit card do everything you need it to do? The issue, however, was that their execution just didn't make much sense. You had to carry multiple bulky and expensive shells around with you, none of which really improved the core phone experience. And with the iPhone's release a year earlier that did everything you needed to do without the bulky shells, people just didn't really care. And people were comparing the iPhone 3G to the Modu phone that you had to dress up in order to take out. And by 2011, the company completely disappeared after running out of money. But that core idea of a phone that you can upgrade yourself didn't quite disappear with the company. Because in 2013, the idea resurfaced, this time in a smartphone form factor. You see, in September, a Dutch designer called Dave Hackens released a concept for a phone called Phone Blocks. He proposed a new kind of phone, one that was designed to last, and that idea became really popular. Twelve years later, people are still thinking and talking about it today, with that original video having 22 million views. All because he was right. Phone Blogs presented the idea where your phone is made up of individual modules, and your entire phone could be disassembled with just two screws, just like Lego. The internet clearly loved it, and guess who noticed? Google. Using Motorola, since they owned them at the time, they used their resources to make their own version of phone blocks. Project Aura. With slightly better design than phone blocks, it was pretty much the everything the original video was trying to be. Nearly everything was swappable the processor, the camera, the display, and they were all magnetically attached to a centre frame. And by 2014, Google already had their own prototypes of the phone. But unfortunately, behind the scenes, it wasn't so smooth sailing. Modules were expensive, and with specs constantly changing every single year, it became almost impossible to keep on top of things. And the connectors were unreliable. And that can't be an issue with your phone's core components. Imagine you're on a bus playing a game on your phone, just to see your phone's battery start sliding across the floor. Not something that can happen. And in 2016, Google quietly killed Project Ara. Best and coolest modular phone never actually got to see the consumer market. But that didn't stop others from trying too, especially the likes of LG. Because in 2016, both LG and Motorola tried again. First the LG G5, with a removable bottom piece. The idea was to be able to swap out the bottom grip for other kinds of modules. The modules included a camera grip, a Bang & Olufsen speaker, or an increased battery capacity. But these modules were very different from the idea of Foam Blocks and Project Ara, because all of the components were actually housed inside the shell of the phone. It was just the bottom module and the battery that could be removed. On paper, it was a great idea. In practice, however, it was fragile, expensive, and had no third-party support. And with the LG G6, they completely got rid of the idea. And then Motorola, again, but now under the ownership of Lenovo, with the Moto Z, or Moto Z, I don't know. Instead of sliding anything off, you could just magnetically attach what Motorola called 
motomods to the back of the phone just like a case. It was quite a similar idea to the G5, allowing you to connect bigger batteries, better speakers or even a projector. And this was an improvement to LG's attempt. But the modules still cost far too much for any normal person, and didn't add enough for them to be worth the price. And then after a few more years, Motorola also stopped supporting them. And by this point, a clear trend was starting to form. Modular phones would always fail, and the entire concept just started to become a bit of a joke. But despite modularity failing, flexibility isn't quite dead yet. Because even today, there are some phones with that same modular essence, but just with a slightly different perspective on the idea. Like Fairphone, for example. They still make phones with removable parts. Cool, right? Well, while I do support the idea that you should be able to repair your phone yourself, their focus, unfortunately, isn't what mine is, which is upgradability, with them focusing more on ethically sourced, sustainable, and repairable. You can upgrade your screen or battery if anything's broken, but not much in the terms of upgradability. Also, nothing, or more specifically, their CMF sub-brand. With the CMF Phone 1, it had quite a similar idea. Being able to unscrew the back and screw more things into it. Unfortunately though, this is more for customizability or adding accessories, rather than upgradability or repairability. But it does show the idea of modularity isn't quite truly dead yet. Also, framework. Not a phone, but instead a laptop. But it does have some pretty similar ideas to phone blocks or Project Ara. Change your mainboard if it's getting slow. Change your battery if you need more capacity. And actually my favourite, Replace the ports on the side of the laptop. It is fully upgradable, repairable, and actually successful. So modularity didn't really die, it just moved into different areas or different forms. But if modularity seemed like the dream phone gimmick, why did it fail? Well, there are a few big reasons. First, physics. Phones are tiny compared to desktop PCs, so making components that can be easily taken out is really difficult. It also just adds too much bulk for the average user, and also often gave issues with durability. And second, software. Each new module actually has to, you know, work with the phone, so you'd need to install drivers on the go. And also, each new component adds power draw and compatibility issues. And third, business, or rather greed. Companies are obviously wanting to get as much money as possible, and in order to do that, they would want to charge you a 20% markup on their £1,000 phone, rather than a 10% markup on their £50 camera module. And finally, the consumers. While me or you might find it cool to replace or upgrade your phone on the go, and to make your own and customise it yourself, what about my grandma? Most people don't know how to or want to make their own phone. They just want something that works. So that's it. Modular phones went from one of the coolest ideas in tech, an idea that could have been far cheaper, simpler, and more sustainable, but unfortunately physics, cost, and greed got in the way of one of the best innovations of smartphones for the next three decades. So yeah, modular phones didn't fail because they were bad ideas. They just failed because they were too far ahead of our current technology. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you did enjoy, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe, and also watch one of these two videos here. Bye!